HD Zero just launched their 20 by 20 Halo flight controller. In today's video, we are going to see if you need to get the MPU 6000 version that's $20 more expensive, or if you can get the identical or better performance out of the ICM version that's just $65 for a flight controller and a Diversity Gemini Express LRS receiver. We have Charles here who's tested more flight controllers and gyros and tunes than anybody I know, and if there's two people that want the ICM to work more than anybody, it's Charles and I. It's gonna be a fun experiment. You guys are coming along and who knows what the answer is gonna be. We're gonna be reviewing the flight controller today, but also have Charles here to help explain why they have two different versions with two different gyros, what the pros and cons would be, and why there's a $20 difference between the two. All right, guys, my name is Charles, uh, Mr. Charles FPV. I'm just a guy who really likes to tune quads. I like to get into the uh, nitty gritty, uh, a little bit of the math, a little bit of feel behind all the gyros. And uh, the main reason why MPU 6000 is so expensive these days, or more expensive than the ICM, is because it's not in production anymore. And so uh, the ICM is the new gyro on the block. It's uh, in production, and uh, but we've been using the MPU 6000 since forever, right? Since mm -hmm. when can you remember the MPU 6000? I feel like forever ago, and it was always known to just work. Right. Everybody's been trying to come out with different gyros and use them, but the MPU 6000, everybody always came back to, and it just worked. Do you know why it went out of production, or like? And how, are we eventually going to run out? Is the price just going to go up until we're out? Or and so the reason it's out of production is just because it's so old. Mm -hmm. The new gyro has more features, it's more energy efficient. And so basically like we want to use the uh, ICM gyro in the future because it's going to be more relevant. It's more readily available. Re readily available and One thing I didn't understand is why can't I put the same filters and PIDs on ICM gyro as I could on an MP6000 gyro if the ICM is even supposed to perform better. But for whatever reason, it doesn't work. And that is where you come into play because you know the nitty gritty of why or how gyros work and how pit controllers or whatever work, how Betaflight works. So why can't you just put the same tune from MPU 6000 flight controller onto an ICM gyro in theory? Like what is different? Basically the internal filters on the uh, MPU 6000 gyro have just been perfectly matched for our five inch quads. Mm. Um, the internal filters on the ICM gyro are just different. And okay. so there's a balance between attenuation of your gyro signal and latency. Mm -hmm. You can't have one without the other. Okay. And so the goal is to use a balance of beta flight filters and tuning the internal filters of the ICM okay. to match it with the MP6000. Okay, I gotcha. And so all we want to do is replicate the MP6000. So in theory, what we're gonna, we're gonna have the same PIDs. Same PIDs. And the goal of today's video is to give basically two, two different filter recommendations to get almost identical performance between ICM and MPU. As close as we can get. And that's the point of today's video. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're just putting the karate preset on this, uh, on this guy. And so that's a standard beta flight preset. Yeah, we want to do it so that um, anyone at home you can just click the same preset okay. and get the same results. And are you gonna change anything at all as far as filters or anything? So I'm gonna run the Karate Spicy because I know that the uh, this, this is a relatively new build and we know that the resonance is pretty good on these 533 frames. Okay. So Karate Race 6S. Do you check dynamic idle? These are the settings that I use. D-Shot 600, Dynamic Idle, New Spice, Mint 2024, ELRS 500. Okay. Actually, I think it's the Old Spice that I use. Old in 2024. Old Spice. I have like not it. checked that setting yet, so I think okay. it's the Old Spice. Sweet. Which gyro is this? This is the MP6000. Okay. So this is what we this is what we know. This should just work. This is what we've flown and for so, the past however many years. And this should set the standard for what we're going to try and get out of the ICM. Yes. Okay. Let's fly. Got the tune that Charles put on there. This is the MP6000 oh. gyro. We're each gonna set a pack as a baseline, and then we'll try and see if we can get ICM to that same performance. Oh my gosh. Need to slow down. So the big thing you see from that test is it still flies fine with bent props. It doesn't really care. 
no weird trills or oscillations. And that's what MP6000 is notorious for doing. Just always working. And this I can just consider an old reliable fly controller. That's so cool. Flies good. All right, Charles, your turn. P6000. Would you say this feels like an average quad? For sure. I'd say that's a good baseline. Yep. Flies good, reliable, bent props. Now it's time to put ICM on. Now that we have the baseline, we're changing over to the ICM gyro. And this is where one of the best features of the HD0 flight controller is going to shine. Flight controller has a receiver built in and the HD0 VTX plugs straight in. The new versions, the old versions you have to repin, but disregard. So all we're gonna do is take off the top plate, unplug the ESC, unplug the VTX, put in the new FC, plug in the VTX, plug in the ESC. Obviously I have to flash in everything, but if we already had it pre-flashed, it would literally be plug and play, and that's pretty awesome. So this will be like a sub 10 minute flight controller change where we have to change four screws and unplug two things. One feature of this flight controller is its great compatibility with the HD Zero Race V3. Ryan Quellet recommended I do the USB port down, which puts the smaller components on top, meaning I can pull the Race V3 closer. I can probably even pull it closer than I have it now and still be comfortable with the amount of room. Super happy with how the Race V3 plugs right in. ESC plugs at the front works great with the Lucid. Just a very nice put together stack in my opinion. So Charles, what in tarnation are you looking at? I remember using a special build to make flight to change these settings, but I do remember you changing with the stock beta flight. Do you understand any of what's going on on the screen, Brody? This is a this is a Yeah, because what if Charles can figure it out? and then he can tell you, and then you can have $20 cheaper flight controls. <laughs> or I can just hand my, or I just start hand my I'll just start handing out my dollars. tunes for like, seven dollars. Seven dollar tunes. Is there a membership on that? Yeah. Is there a, I've got like 25 a year. So how do you fly? I haven't flown it yet, should I? Yeah, fly. Okay. ICM, completely stock. Dude, I might think, I think this might fly better. This fly is amazing. Dude, this thing flies definitely better. 100% better. Can I try to make it fly even better? Yeah, that fly is amazing. Okay, so why, why did that fly? I don't know. That flew amazing. And that was Bone Stock Karate, Old Spicy. AM32. So this is what I norm this is what I did to make the ICM fly good. Which is what? I would set gyro hardware low pass filter to experimental. Experimental? Yeah. Okay. And this works on what versions of beta flight? Most of the recent versions. Okay. And then I'd go into the filters 
and I would just set this to like 275. So you turn off low pass one, set low pass two to 275. Yeah. Okay, Charles special settings. I don't really don't know how it can fly better, but we're gonna find out. Oh yeah. It's got that little whistle. It's perfect. Oh yeah. Listen to how crisp. Dude. That flies so good. You gotta fly that. Initial thoughts. I still haven't been able to push on this track yet. Yep. So from the sound of it, you just can't hear pop off. Yeah. Like try to let's try to get it out. Like we got it out a little bit. Barely. So but, minimal. Uh huh. It feels really good, but I'm afraid people will burn motors once they start bending props on this. In the summer? So, hmm. I think I'm gonna turn the low pass filter, gyro low pass filter two down. So we can have like an, this is the aggressive version. Yeah. I'll put the more lax version up now, let's I give guess. Give it a try. Yeah, let's try it. So what did you change? I changed the low pass filter from 275 hertz to 250 hertz. Okay. And so yeah. this should be safer for bending props and yeah, stuff. Just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, let's see if it handles the bent props. They're not that bent. Just bend, just bend it. I know. I'm gonna bend it in just a little bit. Oh yeah. All right, can it handle? <laughs> All right, now I'm very intrigued. ICM gyro with bent props, ready? Those aren't very bent. Bend the crap out of one of them. Usually they bend down, right? I think you're right, yeah. Down more than that. I just wanted to sound. I guess I, I can just go hit something too. Flattening out props usually does a bunch too. I say you just full throttle into a brake pillar. All right, thanks Brody. <laughs> All right, ready? Army. That felt good. From what you just saw, what would you consider the results of this test? I would consider the results of the test. The ICM can perform just as well, if not better, than the MPU 6000. But for race readiness, I still think there's a lot of time for it to prove itself. The, the MPU 6000 has had many, many years to mm. prove itself reliable in I race see. scenarios. Yep. Um, and the ICM just, I don't know that many racers running the ICM gyro. I see. So it's almost like it's more volatile. It, it, that quad flew so good, but you just don't know if it can perform that good consistently. Right, have we tested it under like yeah. full throttle tracks such as multi-GP IO yeah. or? when it's hot with bent props, bent motors. Like this was a new quad. Mm -hmm. So the test wasn't perfect. And we only uh, flown in one uh, weather scenario. Yeah. Like this is end of January. Yeah. It's like 
40, 50 degrees outside. Yeah. But it shows a lot of promise. And if you're trying to pinch pennies and you want to get the best bang for your buck, the ICM flew amazing. And especially with the settings, or especially with the small tune changes that Charles gave, it seemed pretty resilient. And the only thing that we haven't done is we haven't tested this over a long period of time. So just from today, we're gonna put all the settings down in the description below for you to try. But if I were to go buy an HG0 Halo flight controller right now, I would buy the ICM version, personally. I haven't been given a reason not to. Would you do the same? Of course. Charles did call this like two years ago, I think. Well, when was the last, you post, the, I would, I'm gonna pull up your Facebook post right now. That was at least a year ago where Charles was like, the ICM is definitely, is like, it's just as good. Yeah. And everybody kind of called him crazy. Charles is right once again. Thanks for watching today's video. Please let us know what you guys think. If you want to buy the Halo flight controller, it's down in the links below. And we'll see you guys around flying. Bye.